So, uh, hello everyone. I'm Sanket Deshpande. I'm a fourth year student here at BITS Goa. So, and I'm really humbled to be here among such amazing speakers. So, uh, when the first time the organizers asked me to deliver this TEDx talk, my first question to them was, why me? Like, why should I give this? So, uh, because, because I thought, I always thought that I'm just an ordinary student, right? I'm just a student trying to give, uh, wake up for my morning class and give uh, exams and probably maintain good grades. So they told me that they want to, like they want me to talk about probably the th three ideas which I have been working on while uh, here at Bits Goa. So yeah, that's what I'm going to do today. But uh, what I'm going to do is just share my experience of working on these ideas and probably deliver some of the takeaways I had while, while I did that. And uh, eventually probably prove my point that I'm still an ordinary student here. So uh, for the first idea, I want you guys to, uh, to sort of imagine. Imagine that you have to learn a new language. And to do that, you have to actually uh, probably travel every day 10 kilometers. And once you reach your school or uh, inside your classroom, there are about hundreds of students. And uh, there's only one teacher to manage all of them. And by the way, you have to do this blindfolded. So I don't think I could have uh, been able to actually learn that new language. But anyone today who is actually trying to uh, go to a blind school, uh, someone who is visually impaired, faces this kind of a problem every day. So this, this thing really bothered me. And eventually, I, I joined Project Mudra uh, as a founding member. So Project Mudra is a startup by uh, Bits Pilani students to essentially develop technologies which can uh, which can solve the uh, problem uh, problems faced by the visually impaired. So we ended up uh, so yeah uh, we ended up making a device which could uh, teach Braille to uh, to anyone a student uh, uh, an aged person some anyone and that person could could do that by sitting at his his or her home. So you do not need to go uh, go to a particular place to do that because. Uh, this, this convenience is very significant because less than 10% of, of the blind population is actually educated or, or knows how to communicate with Braille. So, uh, and the main problem with teaching Braille to someone is getting one is to one uh, attention, which is really not possible, especially in a country like India. And if, even if it is, it is really expensive. So our device is, was actually less than a fifth of the nearest market competitor and could be used by anyone. And that's why uh, 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 probably a poor school kid uh, or, or a very rich uh, uh, a aged man, anyone, anyone could actually use this and learn Braille. So uh, this, is, this is actually uh, a girl in a blind school in Hyderabad using our device to learn Braille. So that is the kind of impact our, our startup had. So, <coughs> but then what? The most challenging aspect for me while developing this technology was not the technological one itself. The challenge was to actually understand how, how to teach someone Braille. Because I, as, a, uh, as someone who can see, uh, do not have the experience of going through everything without the power of vision. And to understand the problem in itself, we had to step in the shoes of, of the users. So what we did exactly is to blindfold ourselves and went to uh, blind schools and asked the teachers to teach us Braille from scratch. And that is how exactly we developed a solution which could solve all kinds of problems related to learning Braille. And this is something which I don't think any engineering course could ever teach me. Because this, this, this is something you have to, like, you have to actually go and understand the problem in depth, without which your solution would actually be incomplete. So, <clears throat> yeah, this is this is the most strong takeaway for me of working on this idea. After this, <coughs> I I was I wanted to work on something new, something exciting, and uh, who better to look up to than Elon Musk for exciting ideas, right? So, uh, for those of you who do not know, Elon Musk is is a visionary or a tech tech god, so as to say. So uh, he's the founder and CEO of companies like SpaceX or Tesla. So normally, uh, like he is someone who looks like this. But to an average, a, a very average engineering student, 
he looks something like this. So <laughs> uh, when I found out that uh, uh, the team Hyperloop India was looking for people with my kind of a skill set, I immediately jumped in on the opportunity. So I joined the team to uh, work on the electrical systems of the Hyperloop pod. So in very, very simple words, Hyperloop is essentially a, a, a train sort of a thing which, which levitates on, on a track and, and goes inside a vacuum tube. And it goes fast, like really, really fast. So uh, that's the concept of Hyperloop. So, uh, the, the, so SpaceX uh, had hosted a competition called SpaceX Hyperloop Pod Competition, so, uh, where Hyperloop India was amongst the 24 teams from around the world selected to participate at this competition at the SpaceX headquarters. So the challenge was really simple. You had to design a Hyperloop pod and go about to manufacture it. If you are able to successfully do that, you take your pod to the SpaceX headquarters in Hawthorne and race it against all your competitors. And that's pretty much it. So <coughs> Hyperloop India, as, as, as the name suggests, is, is a team of students from around India. Though it started off as a bit Pilani team, uh, it, it eventually grew into a team of a lot of students from various institutes from across India. So <coughs> We had to make this Hyperloop pod, but that had to be done by, by a student team which can only come together from across India uh, only during their vacations, right? So the competition was in August 2017, and all of us had our final exams sometime in May. So that left us with just over two months to make an entire Hyperloop pod. And while we are doing that, we are also raising uh, the funds required to actually made it, make it. And yeah, we did it. So that's our Hyperloop pod, which, which com competed in the, at the SpaceX uh, competition. So <coughs> the, and again here, the most amazing thing for me wasn't again the technology. So while we were here at, at, at this event, uh, I realized that all of our competitors, the 23 other teams, were really technologically advanced. They were using components which SpaceX actually uses in, in their Falcon 9 rockets. And they, they, they had been working on their pods since a really long time. And they had a lot of fancy workshops and places to uh, build those things. Uh, and frankly speaking, we were working in a workshop in Bangalore yeah, and had just two months to do something. And we were going around the entire city to find a a cheaper component than the previous one because they're really tight on funds. So technology wasn't it. The funds were, weren't the thing why we were able to compete with some of the best people from around the world. The reason was simple. The reason was teamwork. So many students from around the country, uh, from various backgrounds, coming together to raise money to, to build a mechanical chassis to make the electronics, and all of it fitting together in a perfectly uh, the perfectly man uh, manner in th the way it is supposed to work out. And that's how we were able to build, build the pod. And that's again something which, which uh, no engineering course could have ever taught me. So uh, yeah, <coughs> that's something. Uh, all right, so while, while I was at, at this event, uh, Elon Musk comes in to address the student, student team. And uh, while all of us think of him as some, some sort of a uh, uh, probably an alien, uh, uh, a visionary uh, who, who has these extreme ideas of working on reusable rockets or, or uh, electric cars. But uh, so he came up and he started talking about why he exactly wants to do this. So uh, as fancy as you would expect, the reason wasn't, uh, wasn't like that. It was really simple. He said that uh, these are the things which, which get him excited to wake up and, and do something. So, that's simple, that's it. So <clears throat> I think all of us, all of us at some point of the time ha uh, or other, like have an idea where like, you know, it really excites us it's, and that's all we want to do. Some of us actually end up pursuing it, some of us don't. There are a thousand reasons to pursue or not pursue. So <clears throat> I have an idea, something on those lines. So, <clears throat> When I was a kid, uh, like, like many of you, I, I wanted to become an astronaut. 
So I was really intrigued by the idea of going into space or uh, like uh, just the idea like uh, of, of going to outer space or something like that. So when I, when I actually started studying engineering, I, 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 I could not like wait anymore. So in my first year itself, I wanted to do something about it. And I started working on something known as Project Apiero. So Project Apiero is a, uh, is a student-led uh, near space micro satellite. So uh, it, what it aims to do is measure biologically harmful radiations uh, uh, by, by deploying a radiation detector. So I'm not going to s speak about the technical details of it, but uh, I'll, I'll probably elaborate the kind of journey I had through, through this project. So I started working on this in my first year of college. And uh, in my first year, uh, I used to go up to people and say, uh, uh, I want to send something up to space. And most of, most of them would say, this is ridiculous. I mean, you are just a first year student. Go, go, go to your classes. Do, do after that, like only after you do that, talk about something like this. So, but then uh, I really wanted to follow up on this. So what, how I started is by, uh, by catching, uh, like running after a lot of my college seniors. So I used to go to them, catch hold of them in cafeterias and hostels, and then ask them to sit down and explain concepts of embedded systems or probably satellite communication and ask them to teach me how to go about it. Later on, I graduated to irritating my college professors to do this. And uh, after all of this, uh, eventually we ended up uh, uh, building a collaboration with the Tata Institute of Fundamental Research in Mumbai and uh, the National Balloon Facility in Hyderabad, uh, which, through which uh, we, are going to be, we are going to be able to actually build a satellite and then launch it. So, uh, yeah. Uh, <coughs> So while doing all of this, uh, I mean, <coughs> it wasn't, so you might imagine that space, uh, something related to space is really, uh, really complicated. It's really a difficult thing to achieve, right? But I mean, from my experience, I, I would say it's not exactly that. So, <coughs> so there's a point of time um, when uh, we, we had to test the, heat integrity, basically uh, test, uh, test the uh, thermal conductivity of the material with which we are going to make our satellite. So to do that, a, a, a general assumption would be that you need an elaborate laboratory with a lot of equipment and a lot of, uh, and a lot of other things. But uh, we did not have access to any of that at, at that time. So we ended up doing this test in our college uh, or a hostel bathroom where uh, we use a bucket and a thermometer to actually do this test and it's completely valid and it worked out well. So this, is, and it forms an essential component of our satellite. So <coughs> coming back to the point where I started off, any, any, of, the, any of these things, any, uh, be it Project Mudra, be it Hyperloop, all of them, them were uh, a bigger problem, uh, uh, a huge aspiration but if you actually look closer, all of them were simply composed of a lot of ordinary problems, which, which compiled together to be a big problem. So, and while I was, I was preparing this TEDx talk, I realized that uh, there's nothing great about me or my teams or anyone who, who, who was able to achieve either of these things. So the only thing which was required for us to do is solve these ordinary problems, which actually have ordinary solutions. So again, I'm just an ordinary student trying to work on ordinary problems and to find ordinary solutions. So, <clears throat> and, and that's about it. So anyone, anyone from the audience, anyone uh, in the world can do this. And all you need to do is solve a multiple of these ordinary problems. So <clears throat> to, towards the end, uh, I, I, I would say that I have been, kind of successful in doing this because uh, after three years of working on, 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 on solving multiple ordinary problems, my team and I are launching uh, Project Apiero, which is India's first student-led uh, microsatellite, which will be launching on this Thursday from Hyderabad. Thank you, thanks a lot. <laughs>